Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this does not work without you guys. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football guys. Wake up here, guys. Wake up. Man, um, yesterday was, you know, it was a tale of two different, a tale of two different cities or a tale of two cities. You know, yesterday was great because I saw Richard for the first time and since March, you know, I had E2 Blue, I actually did two live streams and stuff. We have football the day after tomorrow. I mean, you can look down here and see five days, 10 hours, 38 minutes and 40 seconds away for the Cowboys kicking off. And that was great. And then on the other side of it, I burned up my stove, excuse me, my microwave, and killed some of my fish by accident. So I realized I'm trying to do too many things with just not enough time. You know, I always say that, that <laughs> there's so much to do with not enough time to do it in. But I've got to slow down just a little bit because if I don't, like everybody keeps telling me, it won't matter because you won't be here. So I'm going to try and take it a little bit easy today, go out, find a microwave to replace the one that I burned up and uh, catch up on some rest. But in the meantime, we have the Dallas Cowboys getting ready to take on the Los Angeles Rams in a season that's been anything but the normal. The NFL is prepared to play less than 16 games if they have to, but they wanna play all 16 games. And as we know, most stadiums, there will not be fans in the stands. I still have no idea how many are going to be in Dallas, I know Jerry Jones is going to want to push the envelope as far as possible to try and get as many people as he can legally in that stadium. But I know that the Rams at SoFi Field won't have any in there. I know uh, the Raiders Stadium, they're not going to have people. I know FedEx, they normally don't have any people anyway. Uh, Philadelphia, New York, those stadiums aren't having fans in them. So we'll see what happens. But, you know, last night I was sitting there talking with E2 during our live stream. And for the Cowboys, I guess there's more. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking about a game plan. If your team getting ready to play somebody this week, now, you know, you basically, there's three years of Sean McVay tape out there of what he does or what he likes to do, although it's going to be different. But you've got a little bit to go by. Without a preseason, you have no idea what the Dallas Cowboys are going to do. And that's what I was just like. How do you prepare for them? You have a totally different defensive coordinator. You've got totally different defensive players, different philosophy all the way around. And the coaching staff is from so many different places. I don't know how, first game or two, you really figure out what the Dallas Cowboys are doing. And that may be a little bit of an advantage for the Cowboys is the element of surprise. Um, in talking to Mike Nolan, this is, and, and I think maybe we should put this whole thing to bed. Um, Mike Nolan says he's had no discussions about Earl Thomas coming to the Cowboys. Flat out. Done. So that's not to say that Jerry Jones and crew haven't discussed it, but if your defensive coordinator hasn't said, hey, go get that guy, or hey, I want that guy, or hey, I need somebody, then that says a lot as far as what the Dallas Cowboys are. But although maybe that's this year may be the year of deception of the Dallas Cowboys where they don't let you know what they want or what they're trying to do. And maybe that's all part of the game to get a better deal with Earl Thomas. I don't know. But one thing I can guarantee you about is that guy is going to be ready. the most scrutinized quarterback, if there's one that's been scrutinized more, Tony Romo's close. Tony Romo is close in being scrutinized. But I don't know of one that's had more scrutiny than Dak Prescott, that's had more doubts about him than Dak Prescott. A guy who has been meh his whole career. A guy who you could look at and say, you know what? The way he's been disrespected, the way he's uh, been treated, 
that if anybody would say I'm going to hold a season hostage, you could rightfully say, yeah, he should do that. Russell Wilson, who is considered one of the best quarterbacks in football. Russell Wilson, after winning a Super Bowl and going to a second one, after being paid one time a big contract, said, literally put a gun to the head of the Seattle Seahawks and said, if my deal is not done by April 15th, you will never get a signed contract from me ever again. Literally. Literally. This is already after he had an $87 million contract, I believe it was. At the time, which was a big contract then. It's chump change now. All offseason, we heard about you can't pay Dak Prescott more than Russell Wilson. He's not the best quarterback in football. Deshaun Watson, he not only beat Russell Wilson, he leapfrogged Russell Wilson's contract. He's going to get more money out front than Pat Mahomes. Deshaun Watson is the highest-paid quarterback in football. I know we're going to hear, well, he's a better quarterback than Dak Prescott. Well, their playoff record and the statistics are pretty much even. Dak Prescott's actually got more wins. I know a lot of you will figure, well, the only thing counts is winning. Well, okay, Dak Prescott's got more wins. Same playoff record. And he had Hopkins all three years that he's been in there. Hopkins. Hopkins, who makes a quarterback look good. Because, you know, we were talking about uh, Brandon Carr coming back. And you know, a lot of Cowboy fans will say Brandon Carr is trash because they'll remember that one-handed three-finger catch by Odell Beckham Jr., which was an awful pass. Awful pass. Odell just made a great play. A lot of plays, Deshaun Watson gets major separation where it's an easy throw because he's wide open, or he'll jump out the building and get the ball. We'll see a little bit more this year without Hopkins there, you know, as opposed to Randall Cobb. Randall Cobb, who sometimes has uh, a bit of the drops. Randall Cobb's a good receiver, but he does drop some passes. Not just from Dak, also from Aaron Rodgers. But Dak Prescott, instead of holding out, instead of saying, I'm not going to do anything till I get paid, did the polar opposite. He built a field and had everybody during a pandemic come into his house to work out to be ready for the season. I don't know if a lot of you get that or not. He built a field to work out. We can't go practice as a team, but we can come over to my house and we can work out together. And maybe, just maybe, this is going to help the Dallas Cowboys take that next step. With a new coaching staff that's in there, with a short training camp, they at least got work together, got rhythm and timing together on the field and really started to come together as a team. Dak Prescott says, I got a fire in the belly. And the one thing I can tell you about Dak Prescott is don't bet against him. Dak Prescott, throughout his whole career, even before the NFL, be it high school, be it college, and right now, people have always doubted him. But in the end, whenever he has taken over a job, he's never let it go. And he's taken Mississippi State to heights that they never dreamed of. And right now, I think he's going to get the Dallas Cowboys back on top. You might call me crazy. You may say I'm just a Dak Prescott fan. I am a Dallas Cowboy fan that believes that that guy is the best guy for the Dallas Cowboys. He has done everything above and beyond what you expect for your quarterback. And now we're going to see with a different coaching staff, with plenty of weapons around, what we're going to get this season. The season that's going to be like none other. The day after tomorrow, I can't believe it. Football is finally back. And let's hope and pray that it stays here throughout to a Super Bowl. All right, y'all. I got some stuff I got to try and clean up and take care of right now. I got to go out and check on the fish to see 
um, if I lost any more, but I think the rest of them are okay. And uh, I got to do some stuff to take care of mama. I'm Mark Holmes, and I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you soon.